Hey everyone, my name is Trent and I live, travel, and game out of my van and along my travels I often stumble upon creepy, weird, or abandoned places and today is no different. As I'm traveling off to my next destination, today I will be driving through a very unique town here in Georgia and that town is named Milledgeville and the reason why this place is so unique is because Milledgeville has this whole campus of abandoned buildings just sitting in the middle of the city and you guys know me, I love that sort of stuff. And finding a place like that here on the eastern side of the states is very few and far between. So I'm gonna start making my way there right now and explore the grounds a little bit and then later on find a place to sleep for the night nearby. It should be pretty fun, so follow along. I've officially made it here and this place feels strange. <laughs> there are so many abandoned buildings one after the next. And the weirdest part about it is like, there's no one around. I mean, I guess it makes sense because these buildings are abandoned, but it really does feel like an abandoned city. Good girl, sit, sit, sit. Good job. Wow, this place is hauntingly beautiful. That's the best phrase I can come up with. All these buildings, their architecture is just really, really pretty, but the fact that they're abandoned, decrepit, and left to decay just has a very spooky vibe to it. Especially this building, knowing its history. This building here actually opened in 1842 as the Georgia Lunatic Asylum. And when it opened, it was at max capacity and they were way understaffed, which led to a decline in quality treatment for the patients that lived here. It was actually so bad that this place was notorious for its mistreatment of patients. There were rumors of children being confined to cages, adults living in straitjackets, forced shock therapy with electricity, and even ice baths, all in this building right here. Holy crap. This is insane. So we've got this giant white building that looks like the White House. We've got this abandoned building over there, that abandoned building over there. There's the asylum over there, another building, and then all these buildings over there are abandoned. And even further down these roads are more abandoned buildings. Like, this is so weird and cool. It really does feel like a movie set here. And I'd be real surprised if a movie hadn't been filmed here yet because this is like the perfect post-apocalyptic city set ever.
Dude, I straight up feel like I am in a video game right now, specifically of the horror genre. Oh wow, it smells like a government building. <laughs> Look at the size of these doors. <laughs> this is so insane. This building is definitely newer than most of these buildings. It's a lot more intact, that's for sure. But I think this is the hospital. I don't know much history about it. Don't know why it's abandoned. Could be just lack of funding. I don't know, but I need answers. It looks like there's even abandoned houses here. Wow, there's one, two, three, four, five. It really does feel like I just stepped into a post-apocalyptic world. This is wild. Man, what happened here? Feels a little bit like everybody just got up and left, which is really strange because Milledgeville is actually a really bumping town. Like, there's a college here, there's a great population. So the fact that this whole abandoned compound exists here, it just blows my mind. But it's so cool and I'm glad it does because people like me that enjoy this type of stuff can come out here and admire it. And it's a great way to spend my Thursday afternoon. Hi, Millie. <sighs> okay, so I am doing some research on my phone as to why this place closed. And apparently this whole campus is called Central State Hospital. And all of these buildings were a part of the hospital. But essentially in 1842, the Georgia Lunatic Asylum opened up and then the hospital was renamed to Georgia State Sanitarium and then Milledgeville State Hospital. And then in 1959, the Atlanta Constitution exposes horrific conditions at Milledgeville, the nation's largest psychiatric hospital with almost 13,000 patients. And then in 2007, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports on the suspicious deaths of 136 state hospital patients. 42 being at Central State. And then from there, the US Department of Justice opens an investigation, and then by 2010, they closed this whole place down. That's freaking crazy. That's sketchy. How do you feel about all that, Millie? You think it's kind of crazy, huh? Yeah, me too. Give me that, give me that. Give it to me, give it to me. Oh, it's mine now. You gotta run for it, you ready? You ready? Okay, go! All right, it's starting to get dark here, so I think I'm gonna start packing up and try to find a place nearby to camp for the night. Come on, Millie, let's go. Good girl. All right, I think this is home for the night. I found this open parking lot in the midst of this compound of abandoned buildings. So tonight we truly are stealth camping and I think it's a good thing that I've got no obvious signs that I live out of my vehicle. My van just looks like a work van and I've seen a ton of work vans all around here. So I think we're golden, but I'm getting hungry. So I'm gonna head inside and start making some dinner. So I'm actually really excited for tonight's dinner because 
it's a factor meal and factor happens to be today's video sponsor as well and believe it or not I actually really do love these meals like I've eaten them so many times but for those of you guys that don't know, Factor is a service that delivers fresh, never frozen, ready to eat meals straight to your front doorstep. There's no stressing about meal planning. There's no recipe to follow. All you gotta do is heat up your chef crafted, dietitian approved, delicious meals right in the microwave, or in my case, I'm gonna heat mine up in my oven in my van and then eat. And for tonight's meal, I'm actually eating one of my favorites, which is artichoke and spinach chicken. It is so flavorful, so delicious. I wish I could eat this every day. Factor has 35 meals to choose from per week, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. They even have options for people that want breakfast, smoothies, juices, and other snacks. Ooh, this looks so good, and it smells amazing. It's time to feast. Mmm. Now, all the Factor meals are freaking delicious, but the artichoke and spinach chicken is on another level, folks. And if you wanna try it for yourself, head to factor75.com or click the link in the description of this video. And make sure to use my code FINEPRINT50 at checkout to get 50% off your first Factor box. And you'll get free wellness shots for life, which are really good too. Shout out to Factor for sponsoring this video and providing me with this delicious meal tonight. I'm gonna to continue to feast upon this and then I don't know what I'm gonna get into, but we'll figure it out. So because I'm stealth camping tonight, I'm actually not going to set up my Starlink dish. This dish on top of my roof just attracts too much attention. So I'm not even gonna bother setting it up. If I need to use internet, I'll just use my phone hotspot since I'm in town. It'll be more than enough speed for me. So we're just gonna put this up here for now. So I don't know why, but Millie loves laying in the driver's seat, which is so freaking cute. Oh, I love you. Look at those little puppy dog eyes. Why are you so cute, Millie? Huh? And I am just so cozy right now. Despite being in a spooky, abandoned compound of buildings, the inside of my van and the therapeutic rain sounds on my van, it's making it nice and cozy. Oh, there was a big gust of wind. I wonder if a storm is coming through. But I've got my candle lit over there. Millie's still laying in the driver's seat. I asked her if she wanted to come up on the bed, but she refused to, so I guess she's laying there tonight. And I'm about to watch the show alone on my laptop here and then play some games on my ROG Ally. And I was gonna go out and try to explore a little bit more tonight, but with it raining and the cozy vibes just being real nice right here in the van, I guess I'll just stay inside and play video games and watch my favorite show, you know? <sighs>
Good morning, folks. Last night was a successful night of sleep. That rain was coming down all night long, and honestly, that may have been one of the best sleeps I've had in a long time. But I didn't receive a knock last night. Had no problems staying in this parking lot, thankfully. And I think that's because my van just looks like a work van. Like, it looks like it fits here in this industrial parking lot. I think when people see this as they're driving by, they just don't think much of it, which I'm really thankful for. And that's definitely something to think about if you're gonna be living and traveling out of a van. Well folks, I couldn't figure out where to go today, so I just drove four hours south and we made it to the coast. And tonight I'm staying at this boat ramp. And believe it or not, but boat ramps are actually really good options for overnight places to sleep because a lot of people who have boats take their boats out on the water for days at a time and they leave their vehicles parked here. So boat ramps usually allow overnight parking and this one specifically does. So we're gonna post up here for the night and what I'm thinking, tomorrow is supposed to be a nice, sunny, warm day. So I think we're gonna go hit the beach, get some vitamin D, feel the sand beneath our toes. I am so stoked because it's been a long time since I've been to the beach, folks. Man, it feels so good to finally lay down after driving all day. And I don't know if there's a storm rolling in or not, but it's really windy outside and that wind against these palm trees, it's a very therapeutic sound. I might actually lay here for a bit before I make some dinner. This is so nice.
Man, it turned out to be a really beautiful day today. And currently, Millie and I are hiking through this jungle here to get to this really pretty secluded beach. I used to come to this beach as a kid with my family many years ago, and I'm just so excited to spend my day there today. I packed some snacks for me and Millie, including a nice, big, juicy watermelon. So we're gonna spend a good portion of our afternoon here at this beach, and then afterwards, I'm thinking about going to check out this abandoned naval base that's tucked in these woods here. It should be pretty fun. Now, as you guys can tell, what I think makes this beach so unique is all of these dead, washed up trees on the beach. Something about it is just so cool to me. You can climb on them, you can hang out, buy them in the shade, and it just adds so much character to the beach, in my opinion. This beach just feels the most natural out of all the beaches that I've ever been to. Which, by the way, this is a part of Hunting Island State Park in Beaufort, South Carolina, if you're curious. Oh, this seems like the perfect spot to set up camp. I think we can hang our hammock in between these two palm trees right here. We got some nice shade, good view of the beach, and the best part about it, is we've got it all to ourselves. <laughs> Millie. Whoa. <laughs> Watch your nog, girl. There you go. Drink up. This is freaking awesome. And it's like the perfect temperature for me today. It's warm while you're in the sun, but a little chilly while you're in the shade. I think the high today is like 65. Oh, hi Millie. <laughs> you wanna get up? Jump, jump. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh my God. Okay, Millie. <laughs> She's going really crazy. Oh no, no, oh, no. She's so excited to be at the beach right now. Good girl, let's go in the water. Let's go in the water, Millie. <laughs> I got your stick. I got your stick. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Sit, Millie. Really. Sit. Good sit. Go get it. <laughs> ah! You're so fast, Millie. Oh, that's my stick. Okay, now I'm chasing her. <laughs> I'm gonna get that stick, Millie. I'm gonna get it. Give it to me. <laughs> Give it to me, Millie. Give it to me. Oh man, I'm worn out. Woo! But I feel amazing. <sighs>
you know, a nice juicy watermelon hits so different on the beach. Growing up, every time we went to the beach, my dad would always bring a watermelon. So now anytime I eat a watermelon, I think of this beach right here. Really? You want some watermelon? It's good for you. Watermelon's good for you. Take a bite. Or just lick it. That's okay too. What if I give it to you like this? There you go. Good girl. <laughs> now, something I didn't think about when bringing this watermelon out is there ain't no way I'm eating this watermelon all by myself. So, uh, I'm gonna have to carry some of this back. And how I'm gonna do it, I have no idea. But that's for future Trent to figure out. Right now, we're just enjoying the views. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, Millie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You ready for this, Millie? Check this out. Oh, dang, wasn't that sick? <laughs> now, if you guys are wondering why these fallen trees exist here on this beach, it's actually because of erosion. Believe it or not, but the ocean is washing this beach away more and more every day. Oh, shoot, oh, oh, freak, almost fell in the water. That would have been bad. But it's actually gotten so bad that they had to start pumping sand from the ocean onto the beach to fight the erosion. It's kind of sad, but it's still really beautiful to me. I love it. Well, We've been here for about four hours now, long enough to see the tide go out. It's going so far out and it's leaving behind these beautiful little pools of water here. And I think if you keep walking, you could probably get to the sandbar that's right here, which is really cool. But I don't think I'm up for that trek today because we only have a few more hours of sunlight left and we've been here all day. And I still wanna go check out that abandoned naval base. So I think we're gonna go ahead and pack up, hike back to the van, and hit the road. Okay, so here we are at the abandoned fort that I've been wanting to come to for a very long time. And I've actually been here once or twice as a kid, but I was always way too afraid to go inside. But now that I'm a grown man, it's time to conquer my fears. But these abandoned structures here are actually called batteries and they were a part of Fort Fremont, which was a fort here in Beaufort, South Carolina that was built in 1898 in response to the Spanish-American War. And this whole area used to be a whole military base. There was a hospital, there were barracks, and just on the other side of this is the ocean. All right, let's go explore the inside of this thing.
Whoa. This is a big iron door. I guess that was a part of that doorway over there. But this is really cool. I mean, there's not really much to the inside of this battery is what this place is called. I wonder what they did on the underside here. Maybe they just stored ammo. I don't know. Okay, so that has like a little entrance up there. I wonder if this area was some sort of elevator system to bring ammo from the underside to up there to the guns. Freak, I don't know, I'm just making stuff up here. <laughs> What the freak was that? Oh, okay, so there's some other people here. That's what it was. Whew, I'm a little on edge for no reason at all. <laughs> so to my understanding, this area right here is where a 22 foot long turret gun would sit and it would point out into the ocean, which is just on the other side of this battery and it would fire missiles out at enemy ships as they approached the shore. Wow, this sun raking through the trees and the moss right now is so beautiful. Oh, I can hear the ocean. Millie, it's been a good day. Hanging out at the beach, exploring abandoned cool stuff. And we're about to get a gnarly sunset. It's been a really good day. Well, this is home for the night. It's actually a pretty gnarly spot. There's a boat ramp right here. And if you go past those porta potties right there, you can actually drive right onto the beach. However, that area closes at sunset and this is the only area that allows overnight parking. So this is home for the night, folks. Well, folks, I think I'm all settled in for the night. The sun has set and this spot actually seems like a really nice spot. There's porta potties, there's a nice light out here and it feels really safe, which I'm really stoked about. But I just made some dinner and I've got the whole workstation set up. So I think for the rest of the night, I'm gonna chow down on this bad boy and catch up on some work.
It's been a really good day and I just want to say thank you guys for following along on this adventure. It's been a weird one. I've been all over the place in this video, but it's been so much fun to have you guys along. And if you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it, make sure to let me know by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And if you want to support me further and get access to additional content, consider subscribing to me on Patreon, which shout out to all of my Patreon subscribers. It's crazy. We've got so many now, which I'm super thankful for. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one.